Okay, there you go, you're wrong. Okay, we've got a Foxboro Model 13A transmitter. We're using to measure the level of liquid inside this process vessel. Now this vessel is nothing more than a piece of PVC tube, but it's representing what could be a huge tank. And this transmitter is going to measure the height of water inside this tank. The way we do that is we hook up an impulse line between the bottom of the tank and the transmitter, going to the high side of the transmitter, so the more water level we have, the more pressure we will have, and this transmitter outputs a 3 to 15 PSI pneumatic signal representing that water level. So here's one of the problems that we run into when we're doing this sort of level measurement, especially with this style of transmitter. It's something called suppression. If there's a height difference between the transmitter's height and the height of the actual process vessel itself, if the process vessel is greater than or higher than the transmitter, what that means is there will be a static difference, a static pressure generated by a height of liquid that never changes. So for example, let's say we decide to put our lower range value right here on the sight glass. That lower range value means that's to be the 0% mark as water level goes up, that's what we're going to call 0% right here. If that's our 0% mark, we've got this much height between here and the transmitter level, the, uh, uh, the datum point right here, that much height we're dealing with, it's probably about almost two feet of pressure that never goes away. Any liquid level that goes above the lower range value just simply adds on to that pressure that's already existing. What that means then is that we have basically a live zero when it comes to the amount of pressure we're applying to our transmitter. If our zero percent point is right here, we've got this much pressure we're already applying to it that has to be zeroed out or calibrated out of our um, zero setting. Now the way we do this over here is we use the zero screw. The zero screw is what shifts the zero calibration of the transmitter, and the way it works in this particular design is a screw that engages with the spring and pushes at the bottom of that range bar. So let's reason through this and understand what's going on. If we have a suppression set up, a height difference between our tank and our transmitter, that means when the water level, liquid level in the process vessel is at the 0% mark, we already have a pressure on here. We're already starting ahead of the game as far as pressure is concerned. So we need to back out the zero adjustment to suppress the zero so that even with that amount of initial pressure on the transmitter, it's going to say, all right, that's our 0% mark. We're just getting started with 3 PSI. And therein lies the problem. This zero screw has limited adjustment range. I'm going to put my flashlight in there so we can see this better. As I turn the zero adjustment out, as I turn it counterclockwise, that's going to decrease the amount of air pressure coming out of the transmitter, being a pneumatic device. It does so by decreasing the amount of pull that's being applied to the bottom of that range bar. I want you to pay close attention to that uh, spring as I turn this counterclockwise and watch what happens to the spring. As I turn it that way, that spring gets more and more compressed, more and more compressed, until at some point the spring goes solid. When it goes solid, it's no longer a spring. It's a solid chunk of metal, and I've effectively run out of adjustment on my zero. This is a very easy thing to do if you're not keeping your eyes on that spring when you make the adjustment. And uh, two very bad things can happen. One, if, once the spring goes solid, you've just lost your adjustment. And now tiny, tiny motions of that screw have huge impact on the output of this transmitter. It's essentially a solid piece of metal, so your calibration is no longer reliable. Here's the second problem, and the more pernicious. What happens if you back that screw out too far, and that uh, spring becomes compressed, the end of the screw actually backs completely out of the nut. So that when you crank it in clockwise again to thread it back in, if that nut and the screw are possibly off-center at all, they will cross-thread, and you will mess up the threads on a very fine pitch screw, and that will trash that part of the transmitter. We have damaged transmitters like this before in class from people having backed out the, the screw, compressed the spring all the way, and then trying to thread it back in, cross-threading it, and then messing up both the nut inside the spring and the screw threads itself. So don't do that. Whenever you're adjusting this zero spring, you want to be careful to look at that spring and watch what you're doing so you don't go too far and over compress. So you always want to make sure there's some air gap between the coils of that spring so that you're sure you're not all the way compressed. Now this can be a problem in this setup because sometimes we'll run out of range. We may have a situation where we just can't get enough range out of our, our zero screw. We can't get enough uh, suppression out of it with what we're trying to do with our, our process. What I've found as a general rule is when you're using these Fox Barrel 13As, you should keep the amount of suppression a very small percentage of your overall span. So 
to show you what should not be done. If you took this, uh, this process and moved it up, or let's say you set your lower range value at a very high point, that right there is a large amount of suppression. Compared to the span you could possibly have in the process, that's a significant percentage of span, and I guarantee you, you will run out of adjustment when you try to uh, take that suppression out by the zero screw. Now, Foxboro does make a kit you can bolt onto the transmitter called a suppression kit that adds additional tension to the top of the range bar. But that suppression kit is, uh, well, we don't have too many of it here in our lab, and uh, they can be kind of hard to find, uh, usually a lead time when you go to order those kits. So we don't have enough suppression kits here to bolt one on and handle large suppressions. So in order for your lab team's process to work, you're going to have to make sure your amount of suppression is a fairly small percentage of the overall span of your liquid level measurement.